Hi guys, it's Michelle and today's video is going to be another video on Madeline McCann. Madeline McCann is a missing child who went missing in 2007 and it is just one of the most confusing and just aggravating cases of all time. I didn't think I was gonna do a part two on this video unless like some big like event happened within the case. There was recently an eight hour Netflix documentary that released on this case and it was so damn interesting that I figured I would kind of condense some of the parts that I found super interesting into a video for you guys and also some things that I thought were facts in the case that just aren't and it's just crazy how much my opinions on this case have changed since watching this documentary so I would totally recommend it if you're really into documentaries. Basically I'm going to start off with like kind of the rundown of what happened in case you have not ever seen anything about Madeline McCann before. In May of 2007 Madeline McCann was on vacation with her parents Jerry and Kate McCann and her two twin siblings who were two years old at the time. Madeline was three years old turning four. So they were a family from the UK who was vacationing in Praia de Luz, Portugal. They were there with a couple other friends that were like kind of like groups of friends I guess. There was different parents and their children along with Jerry and Kate McCann and their children. So Jerry and Kate and the other parents of the group for the entirety of their trip to Praia de Luz they would leave their sleeping children in their apartments and they would head over to the tapas restaurant and that's where they would have dinner where they were sitting in a place where you could kind of see the apartments from there but like it wasn't close it wasn't that close and it wasn't really like it was definitely in close proximity like it's not far it's nowhere where I would feel safe leaving a child or like I could say that any of my parents would feel safe leaving a child but that's what they did every night it was also known that they did this every night because they had to specifically request the tapas restaurant to sit at the specific table where they felt it was comfortable enough that they could see kind of see like like the resort that they were staying at. They would go there at around 8 p.m. and they would check on their children every 20 minutes. The timeline of when they would check on their children kind of changes depending on who you're talking to out of the group. Um, so we don't really know for sure how often they checked on their children. We just know that they did constantly make checks on their children going from every 20 to 40 ish minutes. So that's what they would do every night and it was like I said known that they did this every night because they had to request the specific table at the tapas restaurant so that they could see the apartments from there. So they would leave their children alone every night and check on them around every 20 minutes. They would also leave the back door open because they didn't want to wake the children with like the sound of the front door and like unlocking and locking it so they would leave the sliding back door open. Um, <laughs> which is dangerous again, I don't know. They did this for nights repeatedly. People knew about it, um, as in, I guess, the staff of the Tapas restaurant, but it was found out later that where this was, like, this routine of theirs was written down, actually, that they were leaving their children alone. I guess the McCann party went and told you know the staff like hey we want to sit at this table so that we can keep an eye on the apartments because our children are sleeping in there if somebody went to the tapas restaurant they could see the reservation paper in plain sight apparently so that is obviously dangerous to see somebody have a routine but also if you have such a consistent routine of leaving your children alone it's not that surprising that somebody might pick up on it but either way sadly on may 3rd 2007 that night Jerry and Kate McCann went to the tapas restaurant like they did previously throughout the trip. They left their kids at the apartment. Sadly, throughout the routine checks, everything looked normal at first, but then Kate McCann went to go check on her children and Madeline was missing. The twins were still there in their bed, but Madeline was gone. It seems that she pretty much vanished without a trace. I mean, I would say that's kind of not that true because there have been sightings and things like that, but nothing obviously conclusive enough to find Madeline. Um, it's been 11 years. Kate is still ongoing but I'm going to talk about some things that I thought were true and that I said in the previous video as if they were true um that aren't true like it's weird because well not even that they aren't true it's just is like there have been so many lies and there's so much more interesting information so that's kind of the basis of the story obviously hopefully <laughs> you guys know like more about the story so that you have like an opinion because I want to see if this video like changes your opinion of who you think or what you think happened to Madeline. I don't know. This changed mine a lot, or at least, at least made me think of the other possibilities. The parents were heavily accused of some type of 
thing with this case. Some people said that Madeline accidentally died in their care. Some people said that they sedated their children so that they would sleep through the night instead of waking up because the night before, according to sources, Madeline says, why didn't you guys come home when we were crying? Like me and the twins were crying. People came up with a theory that maybe the McCanns decided to medicate their children so that they would sleep throughout the night and then accidentally killed Madeline in the process um, by overdosing her. There's so many different theories of what could have possibly happened. Um, some people think that they hurt her maliciously like her parents, but I would say majority of people throughout this case really did think that the McCanns were guilty. The only thing that I would say uh, that the McCanns are necessarily 100% guilty for is that they left their children alone in a foreign country, but they don't really know the area around them. Like, I don't know, like I just would never do that. That's really irresponsible in my opinion. Like I just think they are guilty of being irresponsible parents. Can I say that they, could have killed Madeline, like, yeah, of course, anything is possible, but, like, would I say now that they did? Like, no. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to say because, like, really very few evidence about it, but we're gonna talk about all of the theories, and to me, this was always, like, a huge theory that I had because of the amount of human trafficking in um, different areas and, like, how crazy it is and messed up it is is that was kind of always where I thought that things were going towards. We're going to talk about it and we're going to talk about some of the actual evidence and some of the evidence that was completely not even true that has been plastered everywhere and people really did think this was true. I thought it was true and, and a lot of that evidence is what makes the McCanns look so guilty and half of it isn't even true, but we're gonna get into it. So the first thing that I think was the first mistake that anybody made is allowing the crime scene to be tampered with. Of course, this was a very popular opinion throughout the entirety of the case because as soon as Kate McCann realized Madeline was missing, she ran to the tapas restaurant, screamed to like the part, to the whole McCann party, the whole tapas nine. Oh my God, somebody's taken her, Madeline's missing, like, help and basically everybody ran back to the apartment to help find Madeline. There were so many people in and out of that apartment before the police crossed it off as a crime scene. So uh, therefore, obviously if there's a lot of people, there's a lot of footprints. Obviously there couldn't, like there were so many footprints of people that they didn't even know, that the McCanns didn't even know, just people trying to find Madeline that like you can't say for sure if there was a foreign footprint or some DNA print that didn't match anybody's that were in the apartment because there were so many fucking people in the apartment and that was definitely the first biggest mistake of this entire investigation. So like I said, a lot of people do think Kate and Jerry McCann are guilty of something um, other than just leaving their children alone. So that's where I thought the documentary was going to go in. Like that's the direction I thought it was going to take. I had heard that the McCanns didn't want to participate in the documentary. So I assumed that it was because it was going to be slandering them. Like I thought it was going to be like the same thing that I had heard millions of times with all this racking evidence against the McCanns that like it was almost impossible to think that anything else happened. But that's that's where it started, but it's not where we ended up. So we're gonna talk about some of the evidence that is against the McCanns and some of the evidence that we thought was, but it really isn't. The thing that they kind of pointed out that's a sketchy about the Tapas 9 is that these people didn't have storylines that lined up. They didn't have timelines that all lined up with each other. The times kept changing. They kept saying, no, we go in every 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Like things just kept changing throughout the entirety of the timeline regarding that night. I will say that that like did sketch me out and I was like, okay, this is a point. Like why why are the timelines so off like why doesn't everybody have an exact timeline you have to think that eyewitnesses are like one of the least reliable sources ever because when you see something traumatic or like you go through something traumatic or whatever you start to see things that probably weren't there or like you misremember things quite easily so it's definitely a possibility that each of them are just remembering it differently because of the stress of the situation another thing that i think is really weird about the mccann's um, is the way that they describe their daughter a lot in the media is beautiful, attractive, um, pretty, like just like kind of weird wording. And But it's weird because I've watched people who are not associated with the McCanns, like other than investigating the case and stuff like that, talk about this child like that. And I just think that's so bizarre to use the word attractive regarding a child. Like I just, 
like is she's three years old like she's adorable like cute like that's just like more so what makes sense i don't have a kid so i don't really know how i would describe it but people definitely thought that that was sketchy about the mccann's as well another thing that i would say is probably one of the only pieces of evidence that actually holds up against the mccann's is that kate mccann said that the window was open but the only handprints or fingerprints on the window were kate mccann's the way the prints were it looked like she was opening the window not closing it so people think that like they hadn't touched the window the entirety of that time um and then kate opened the window to make it look like the window was open that's kind of the only evidence because there was no other handprints but it's not like they can't you know wear gloves or something or maybe they even wiped it down before they left like there's so many different possibilities but that i will say is kind of weird that that was the only handprint but the next thing we're talking about is the cadaver dogs because this is something that i saw as complete evidence against the mccann's and it made me pretty positive that something happened to madeline in that apartment and that they were a part of it or they were covering it up basically there was a cadaver dog sends out the smell of a corpse and there is a blood dog that smells human blood um now these dogs are pretty reliable but obviously they're dogs so they can't talk they can only communicate with barking a cadaver dog alerted that there was a scent of a body behind the sofa in apartment 5a it also alerted in kate and jerry's room blood dog also alerted in apartment 5a behind the sofa so then the cadaver dog and the blood dog were taken to the villa that they were staying at post Madeline going missing so obviously the parents stayed in Portugal um, for quite some time while they were there they were staying in this villa so the cadaver dogs and the blood dogs went there as well and they picked up scents on Kate's clothes the cadaver dog also alerted at Madeline's toy she had a little toy called cuddle cat which you can see Kate McCann holding a lot throughout this entire thing this was definitely a huge suspicion in this case of however they were dogs and not actual evidence so it's like kind of back and forth this part was like taken and ran with of course if you guys know about the case slash i definitely talked about it in the last video the mccann's rented a car 25 days after madeline's disappearance cadaver dogs did do a search on the car they both alerted in the trunk of the car like i said these dogs have been proven to be reliable so the police actually did take the cadaver dogs seriously so they went and had samples from the trunk of the car and from behind the couch and had them tested for dna so this was something that i think is so crazy that it was even published that it just blows my fucking mind but it was published all over media because portugal does have different laws about the media they can pretty much say whatever they want and get away with it it's just it's really fucked up um i guess some magazines have that here too but like main media like this was a very popular thing that the dna matched madeline's it was so well known that i can't even believe it people always talked about it and but it was like such a huge part of this case that we thought like that's why i was confused why kate and jerry weren't getting in trouble i was just confused i was like they, they obviously did it then because the media said that the dna match was an 80 percent match to madeline's dna that was found in the back of the car they said that that was madeline body had been in a refrigerator and then moved there because obviously like i said they didn't rent this car until 25 days after madeline went missing so this is me editing but um i was on twitter kind of just like researching that like what people thought about the documentary because i wanted to see because obviously a lot of people thought jerry and kate were guilty and i wanted to see if their opinions changed um after the documentary and a lot of people is dead but then someone pointed out something really fucking interesting that is really true like as well because like um obviously the cadaver dog found the scent of a body in their car which they rented 25 days after madeline's disappearance why did my voice just start doing that something to note that's very important is that after madeline went missing there was so much press paparazzi journalists uh police literally so many people surrounding the mccants anytime they left anytime they went anywhere that for them to be able to move a body from one from point a to point b using the car it's very very unlikely unless obviously there could be the possibility that they had someone else do it but then of course that brings in somebody else 
to the mix of potential suspects, all that stuff. So it, uh, that just kind of also makes it unlikely that the body, even like it, not saying that they didn't do anything, but it's unlikely that the body was transported in their car if there was something that happened. This was like a huge break in the case. If a cadaver dog sends out a corpse in a trunk of a car that the parents are driving, and these samples match Madeline's DNA, you're gonna believe that like something obviously happened. Uh, and it's just so fucking suspicious. However, it's not even true. First of all, the DNA was inconclusive, so they could never conclude if it was Madeline's DNA or not. It sounds so damning because it's like, some DNA profiles matched Madeline, but it's impossible. Like, it's nearly impossible to conclude that it was actually her. Especially because DNA is 50% your mother, 50% your father. You have those people that are using this van, so obviously their DNA is going to be mixed in as well. In the documentary, they talked about how the DNA in the car, 15 out of 20 matched Madeline. To me, I was just like, oh, like, oh my God, so they are guilty. Like, so they did do something, like for sure, like 15 out of 20, like of the samples of the DNA matched Madeline. Like, that's crazy. But then they said that that could literally be the parent's DNA. It could be her sibling's DNA because they share DNA. Um, it's not all of the DNA. It's not 100% match. It's not an 80% match like they said. It could literally virtually be anybody, um, you know? And I just think that's so crazy that this was misspread because that's terrible, like, that's a huge accusation. Yeah, I mean, it's literally accusing somebody of murder and saying that they're, that the child's DNA is in their car, but that's not necessarily true. It's not necessarily untrue, so it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. It doesn't mean that this whole story isn't true, but it, what it does mean is that it's not proven, which is why nothing has actually happened in the case, because it, the DNA was completely inconclusive. Obviously, the DNA was a huge thing that made me just so confused about the case, because that was really a lot of the evidence for me of why I thought that Jerry and Kate were guilty of something. It's not actually as conclusive as I thought it was. Like, I thought it was like an 80% match or a 100% match, which just is not the case. The evidence against the McCanns doesn't really fully amount to anything. Like, yeah, you can have your opinions on how they parent and what they act like in the media and how much money has gone into this case and what they're actually using it for. You can be upset with how Kate McCann didn't answer any questions during an investigation. Um, not every investigation, but there was like a particular one where she refused to answer any questions. You can talk about the fact that they haven't taken a lie detector test. But at the end of the day, these things that you might feel about the McCanns don't necessarily mean that they killed their child. And that's just that. Like, if that's just that. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to put it. People actually think that the Portuguese police might be more corrupt than we think, and they wanted to spin it on the McCanns. Not saying that the Portuguese police were at all guilty or in any form, um, like, involved in the actual, like, abduction or possible abduction of Madeline McCann. However, people think that because this happened to a little British girl in their country, in their Pride de Luge, which is a huge spot for British tourists, that they wanted to spin it on the parents so that it didn't look like that Pride de Luge was the blame of the entire thing. If you think about it, their tourist rates probably already went down from this entire thing, but had we found out it was because the parents did it and like Madeline hadn't been abducted, and nothing like sketchy happened, nothing happened because of Pride Deluge. Like it would have made Pride Deluge look a lot better than it did. Another issue that I have with thinking the McCanns are guilty is the question of the Tapas Nine, like the other people that were involved. There is absolutely no fucking way that a group of that many people would be able to conceal something like this for so long. Um, like, yeah, their timelines didn't really add up and certain things were kind of confusing, but it just doesn't fucking make sense. I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but I'm saying if it did, there is absolutely no way. The other people joining the McCanns on the vacation could have known because it would be way too hard to keep a secret, like, for that many people, um, without somebody slipping up, so definitely don't think that they knew about it. But the next part of this video is going to be talking about the possibility of human trafficking, which I think now after watching this and hearing more stories from other people in Pride Deluge around the same time, I think that this is the most likely 
situation. So of course the McCanns had the police investigating this case, but they also hired different private investigators that talked throughout the documentary and especially towards the end of it and talked about the possibility of human trafficking, which was a huge, huge possibility and you're gonna hear why. Jane Tanner, which was one of the Tap S9, claims that she saw a man walking and holding a child like this and the child looked limp. It's a very popular picture for this case. You've probably have seen it, um, especially in 2007. Jane claims that she thinks that this could have been Madeline. However, this was actually completely disproved because it was actually ended up being a tourist. Um, so people really thought that this was the evidence that she had been abducted, but it was a tourist. But of course this description in this picture started to get people to talk about things that they had seen in Pride Alluge that had been sketchy or weird about this night or even days leading up to it. So a woman who lives in Pride Alluge claimed that somebody knocked at her door that she was staying at asking for donations for a children's orphanage and she said it was really sketchy and he just she just thought he was a con artist and solicitor or whatever was at a beach where the McCanns had been. So it's definitely a possibility that this person actually came in contact with Madeline or probably not in contact, but like saw her from afar and maybe followed her from that point. But basically this man was saying like, we need donations for this orphanage. And obviously it's just kind of sketchy. Um, you would just think that, you know, you know, they're just trying to scam you of money. So she didn't really think anything of it at the time, but then obviously when Madeline went missing, she decided to come forward with her story. And the drawing and description of this man kind of looks similar to Jane Tanner's, and she said that that was like an 80% chance that it could have been that guy. So another suspicious thing. But not only that, this one story and this part of the fucking documentary, because they had some like recreation parts, this one scared the hell out of me and I hated it. Like, I literally want to cry. Um, but this woman who lives quite close to the Ocean Club in Pride Deluge said that the day that Madeline went missing, a man came to her house and once again was talking about this orphanage and needing donations. And as she was talking to him, she noticed that he wasn't looking at her. He was looking like kind of past her and she was confused so she like turned around for a second like looked and he, she realized he was like completely fixated on her child who was three years old at the time like madeline which is just so sketchy and creepy but it gets worse she sent him away or whatever the next day she was doing laundry upstairs and she came downstairs and the man was in her house and he was like with the daughter like he was like just like standing like over the daughter and as soon as like she came downstairs like she started running like like the mom started running towards the man and the man ran away and got away before she could do anything about it but obviously that's fucking sketchy so basically the theory is that this orphanage is really a human trafficking like kind of situation where there's multiple men involved and they are finding children to human traffic and it's so terrifying, so awful and scary to even think about, but it is certainly a possibility. And that is very suspicious that that happened the day that Madeline went missing. So another really interesting piece of evidence is a woman named Carol Trammer who was visiting her aunt who was staying in Pride de Luge at the Ocean Club right above the McCann's, so the apartment directly above the McCann's apartment. She was staying there and it was during the day of the day that Madeline disappeared and she was kind of looking out the window and peering over the balcony and she could see a man was exiting the McCann apartment. She said that she, what she saw was that he was closing the gate very sketchily, like he was like looking around as he was shutting this gate, looking like he didn't want to be caught there. Now, people have a theory that this was one of the kidnappers, so people think that there was actually multiple. Maybe one was sedating the children and the other one was helping carrying out Madeline. Who the hell knows? It's terrifying. But it's a possibility and we can't ignore that <laughs> that just because there might be some evidence or you might feel some type of way against the McCann family that there is a still a possibility that Madeline is out there. And it's crazy to think about, but it's true. Basically, the theory is that this man who ended up being part of the kidnapping um, was kind of checking out the McCann layout of the apartment. Clearly, if Madeline were abducted, it is very, very likely that whoever abducted her was taking notice of the routine that the McCanns had. And while they were out, he might have went into the apartment to check to make sure that he knew the layout of the apartment so that they could easily get into Madeline's room, take her, and leave. It's terrifying to even think about, but 
this is what this lady claims to have seen and if it's true it's definitely a very important piece of evidence and I'm surprised it was overlooked. Another thing that was kind of ignored by the Portuguese police is that there were 28 different encounters of a sexual predator in Praia de Luz of children claiming that a man crawled into their beds at night um, while they were sleeping. Specifically a lot of these kids were British tourists. It's so terrifying and nobody is talking about that like uh, that's what freaks me out so nobody's talking about the fact that there was pedophiles and all this crazy terrible terrible things but he's talking about the fact that there there were people that were trying to solicit of people that were staying in pride Luz right near the fucking ocean club and they were really sketchy and really weird and they were asking for money and they were, you know, this the, even this encounter with this woman who the man was looking at her child and then the man was in her fucking house the next day with the child. There just is a lot of evidence that Madeline could have been abducted by a group of men um, that human traffics and it's terrible and it's so awful and even just horrifying to think about. But what's even more horrifying is the fact that it is a possibility that Madeline could be alive out there and people just kind of stopped looking for her because they assume that the parents did it with little to no evidence. I'm not at all saying that it's not a possibility that the McCanns did it and I'm not at all saying that I don't even think that the McCanns did it because I'm not sure what I think. I do think that it's a possibility for sure but i also think it's such a possibility that she could have been abducted like it really is especially with the orphanage uh, donations and all this evidence of creepy guys lurking around the apartment easily with the rates of human trafficking it could have been that and there's no way that you can tell me that you know definitively what happened until it gets solved and yes there is sketchy things about it. There is sketchy things about the parents. The parents are definitely guilty of neglecting their children. A hundred percent. I would never do that. I would never agree with that. I would never stand by that. But just because they did that does not mean that they murdered their kid. Uh, I do believe that it will be solved in our lifetime. I know a lot of people don't think that, but I do. And if for some reason this case gets solved and the McCanns had nothing to do with it, I will feel guilty for you know, accusing them in the first video that I did. Because I really did believe that they were guilty. And it's not that I don't anymore. It's just that like, I'm open to believing other possibilities as well. Like I said before, there are many possibilities. I do not think because you think that the McCanns were guilty or you think they seem guilty that we should stop searching for Madeline. The possibility either way that she could be alive or she could not be, but either way, the little girl deserves justice and deserves to figure out what exactly happened to Madeline McCann. That is it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up let me know in the comments uh what you guys believe about this case if this uh, video changed your mind if the documentary changed your mind if you've watched it already let me know if that's like changed your opinion make sure you follow me on twitter snapchat and instagram because i'm always posting really dope ass shit on there subscribe for new videos every week and i will see you guys later bye Just do it.